I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing right now. In Jesus' name, I ask for you to speak to us and through me this morning. In Jesus' name, I just ask God for you to open up the heavens and begin to pour out your love upon us. Speak to us. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for the healing of people's hearts, setting the captives free. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Anytime God speaks something to me, I really have a couple of different things that I always do. First, I always give him a questionnaire. And I ask him, are you sure this is what this group needs to hear? And how many know if God says, I want you to speak about this, he already knows this group needs to hear it. I just want to be assured that I'm saying what God wants to say and not getting off track. And here's what God said. He said there's requirements involved to get us where we're going. I think that part of the transitions we've been talking about lately fits this ministry more than it fits anything. We have prospects of buildings and stuff, but it's very slow moving, by the way. We have to have so-and-so make an agreement and so-and-so make an agreement. Another person has to make an agreement for all of it to come together. So we, we're very slow moving in it. It's only as fast as I can move it. But during this time, I know it's a God time. I know it's exactly what we are in is exactly what God wanted. Because if you really look, the people that were hungry when we came to the park are still the hungry people that are still here with a couple with an add-on. But you gotta understand, I believe that there's a reason for that. Because sometimes there's a sifting that takes place. You know, anybody can look like they want to be a part of something when it's in a big, glamorous building. This is, you guys are catching a vision despite what, what things look like in the natural. You're getting the anticipation. You're starting to sense things and feel things. But God spoke this one little phrase to me specifically and said it was for this group. The Valley of Brokenness. Prophetic word was received in the very beginning of my ministry. Telling me that God was going to break me. But he wasn't going to destroy me. That's awesome word. Doesn't sound good, does it? But you know why? It's breaking that flesh. Breaking that desires that are not of him. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And he saves such as have a contrite spirit. Psalm 34, 18. I'm telling you, we in this day, I believe the church, the biggest problem I believe the church really has today is they don't have real brokenness. Broken before God. Being a living sacrifice. Even the valley of brokenness is desperately needed in the body of Christ today because multitude of saints have fallen off the path of life. They've fallen. Many Christians have fallen today. You know why? Because they don't have the brokenness on the inside. There is brokenness in the heart that has to happen for us to be mighty warriors. On numerous occasions, I have seen a change in people's spirits that takes people to an unusual level of disappointment. You know why? Because they don't really have an agreement with God because they have their own agendas in the way. When you have a broken spirit before God, and that's a good thing, it doesn't sound good, but it is. In other words, you totally rely on God for everything. You don't have any desires that get in the way because your desires are His desires. A unity is built between you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, and you're continually pushing yourself down so that He can live through you. God will be hindered if we do not embrace the valley of brokenness. Like I said, some people that aren't here this morning really need to hear this. Come on. 
because simply because he does not use a prideful, arrogant people. Come on. Pride cometh before the fall. He doesn't use a prideful, arrogant people. When we are walking in the cloud of pride, it will cause destruction to everyone around us and ourselves included. If we were to put one individual who has pride, secret sin, a spirit of lying, in a large building, they eventually would find each other. In other words, I would say, if I put somebody with a spirit of pride in one side of a large building, another person with a secret sin, another person with a spirit of lying, they're all going to find each other eventually. And what I mean by that is that's what happens in the body of Christ. There is like a, a drawing together of people who don't have a brokenness on the inside. And it begins to be an establishment, a clique, if you will, that comes against the move of God. You know why? Because they're not dealing with the dealings. This is a time <coughs> where some people are dropping the ball on some of the biggest opportunities they've ever had. See, I take heed to what we have in Belleville is an opportunity to have something great. Come on, I'm not doing that to try to try to pump me up because if that was the case, we would have done some other things already. It's about, my goodness, just to be in that place and to have the experiences we are already experiencing is going to change us for the rest of our lives. And we're just getting ready to go to a higher level. If it's good now, what's it going to be like when we get past this transition? Many are not going to make it past transition. Come on. You know why? Because they're not going to take heed to what God's doing. The Holy Spirit needs to change us. We need to cry out to God, please the blood of Jesus. Come on. In order to be better in our circumstances and our lives. He will hear us, especially our most hurtful and desperate times of trouble. He really hears a sincere prayer. Heard somebody in the spirit pray last night. Was not a good one. Was nobody here? <laughs> All right, praise God. Throw them under the bus. Let's go. I'm getting ready to pull my finger up there. Not this time. But the thing is, during the repentance stage, the altar call, the, the, the looking for those things that have been our mask. I heard the words, Lord, I know I don't have any of these things. Wow. Yeah. You know where it came from? A mask. Why well, get up and do a, a, pre a presentation? That's what it is. It's, it's like a, I'm just going to present myself to look like I'm repenting with everybody else, and I'm not. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I was worried. <laughs> Here's the thing. When change begins, when change begins, his cousin comes over. You know what his cousin is? Uncomfortable. The cousin to change is uncomfortable. Come on. I don't know about you, but it's just something different. We start to rebuke, we start to rebuke and, and destroy the works of the enemy. And I'm telling you, really, God is doing it, and we try to rebuke the enemy. He tries to bring change in our lives to break us from bad habits, to break us from being in religion. Even in the, in the Belleville Revival, we are actually being broken by allowing God to take us into later hours and, and change the way we do things 
have altar call, and then you all got to go back, and then you get prayed for. It's really kind of breaking our normal church way. Everybody's always trying to hurry us up. Let me tell you, a move of God is not an assembly line. It might work at the factory to line everybody up and get it took care of as fast as possible. But sometimes you don't want to do that if that's not the way the Spirit is going. Honoring our prayers. God is honoring our prayers when we ask God to bring change in our life. When we ask God to bring change in our life, He honors that. Many of us don't want to change for the better. Because being uncomfortable or being comfortable is comfortable. People really don't want change if you really want to get down to it. Most of us don't really want change. I used to know a girl she was a friend of mine, just a friend, and she had a boyfriend who was blind. <coughs> totally blind, could not see a thing. Before I really knew what miracles were. But she would go to his house and rearrange all the furniture. Thinking that she was making his home better. And every time he would come home, he would knock his knee, fall over his chair, run into the wall, because he was discombobulated because his comfort was blown out. A lot of us as a church is like a blind man when change comes. We start stumbling over ourselves because we have no idea and we don't like it. We don't like the way it is. She didn't understand what she was doing. She thought she was being good. She really did. Many of us do not want anything or anyone to remove us from our comfort zone. Come on. That's why I said there might be nights where God's moving so much and God says to make a quicker altar call just to send ushers through and take up all the chairs. Come on. Some people are going to freak out. Yeah. Come on. But you got to understand, if we end up with a hundred people trying to impact that building the way it is right now, you're going to have to, we're going to have to make some rash decisions to get the ministry time. Come on. Because I've always noticed, it doesn't matter how big the crowd is, God doesn't go by that. He'll still say off the call whenever there's no room for it. How many times in Litchfield are off the call was only a few could come at a time? Then once they got up, then another group could come. And once they got up, then another group had to come. Come on, sometimes we had to do nine different altar calls. Because there wasn't room. Knock them down, get them up, get them out. <laughs> My inquiry on how will God be able to do all of these wonderful things in us if we don't pay the price? Are we willing to pay the cost, or will we refuse to become broken? Because that is the real cost. God is breaking us. Even the church today is being broken. <laughs> One reason why many regret or even get fearful is because the process is becoming broken. It really hurts. Come on, when you're being broken, it really hurts. I mean, it's almost like the girls sometimes. They used to like to get up in the morning, eat, and then brush your teeth. Man, if we asked them to brush your teeth first, you would think we're asking for a kidney. <laughs> what? I haven't even eaten. How can I do that? <laughs> you stick your toothbrush in and go. And that's just a sample of the comfort that we as a church get. And we do the same thing. Wait a minute. We've done this so many years the way we do it. 
Has it really worked? <laughs> when God does it, it results in suffering. You know why? Because we're supposed to suffer for Him. All right, here, here's one thing God said. He said, I want to bring humility on the body of Christ. You know what? what one of the words that causes humility to really happen in your life? Humiliation. Wow. Come on. Wow. You want to be humbled? Come on. When God says to get humble, that doesn't mean you just recognize things. That means you've got to get crushed. <laughs> Some people tell me, oh, I'm humble now. Well, first of all, you don't look too humble. you got to walk around with your sign saying, I'm humble. Then you're not really humble. Come on. People ought to be able to see the sun's following me. That's all real. <laughs> but so many people today, I believe, are walking around trying to say they're humble when they have not they even found humiliation yet. You know, love never fails. It does cover the multitude of sins. Prayer is very important in our lives, and God loves us more than words can ever demonstrate. And it will take eternity for him to explain how much he loves us. Come on. Some of the things he's even speaking, even last night, it's really nice that he's speaking what he's speaking. Yeah. You know, because he could cause a burning bush to every one of us. He could blind us all. Come on. He could just kill us all. He could send us into Job's life. Come on, he could just do this or do that. God could just break us real quick. He's allowing us to respond. That is nice. Yeah. He's a lot nicer than I want to be to some people whenever I hear in the Spirit that they have no mask. <laughs> they're wearing the mask while they're talking. So let me come over there. I'll show you your mask. Hallelujah. <laughs> A whole other fivefold ministry. <laughs> And the only reason I see that in some people is because they have a potential that is so awesome that they're allowing the enemy to mask everything and cover their sin. Listen, if we ask for brokenness in prayer, and some people do, not knowing really what it is, instead of allowing the Lord to do it, If we allowed the Lord to do it, it would go well. It would be a good thing. Come on. Here, I'm telling you. I want to get to the next point. I talked about this before. Consecrate. It's a word that a lot of people don't understand, but it's consecrate. And consecration isn't spoken about much in the pulpit today. I mean, it's not even put out there. You know why? Because people don't like to hear it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be petted. Either tell me the way it is or get out. You know, I get excited when somebody like Nathan's preaching and getting me to feel like I need to repent and get saved. <laughs> I love that. I mean, he, he gets me so messed up. I'm thinking, hmm, I need to go up. Come on. Because consecration is not spoken about, but the word consecration means to make pure, holy, Consecrate, set apart, devoting oneself to God to regard as sanctification. This is when we separate ourselves from the noise, to 
devoted ourselves to God completely with our time, looking to see what God's will is for our lives. Some people aren't really looking for what God wants to do at all. You know why? Because they want just that position. They just want that call. They just want whatever it is. But they don't want to get down the road to get to it. In this time of brokenness, there's no whining. There's no complaining about how lonely we are, how we need our people around us. This is between just us and the Spirit. And it's walking in total subjection to His will and plan. <coughs> Hallelujah. We must come to God with humble hearts, day-to-day -day basis. And I'm telling you, this is how we conquer the enemy. This is how we're able to meditate on His Word. This is how we become obedient and willing. If we do not humble ourselves, we become broken in a different way. Why? Because it's so He can pour out His anointing in your life. He's going to break you. You just might as well allow Him to break you. process will be very painful. Brokenness is very painful and I call it the love process. It's a lot easier when you call it the love process. God break you me. It's the love process. Come on. It's rewarding when it's over. Come on. When it's over, you're like, woo! <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm broken. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> there will be instances when people won't understand us if they do not have an equal relationship with the Father. We are getting to the point right now as a church, as a ministry, as a life, and all of us here, we don't fit in the normal Christianity anymore. Come on! Some misinterpret us when we're going through brokenness. We're going through the brokenness and we look like we're being saved. got demons on us. The whole heart just getting broken. Back off. Come on, it's not a fun place. I call it, I call it looking like you have the flu spirituality. Come on. People look at us, oh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Coughing, flim coming up, chills, we're wearing a winter coat in July. I showed the church one time in my sweatshirt. And it was 105 degrees outside. Everybody was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, what? <laughs> Reason. No. Some may oppose us in our brokenness, and we will find ourselves lonely in the brokenness. You know why? Because it's a lonely place. Yeah. It's not like you have a group party, like you all get broken together. Come on, let's all come and just hang out in our brokenness. Even though we might be all being broken at the same time, not necessarily can you be broken together. We'll be ones always looking for friends to hang out with, but they're all not looking for us. Have you ever tried to look for somebody who's not really looking for you? Amen. It's like you go in the front door, they go out the back. <laughs> I saw a car here. Oh. Guess he's leaving. <laughs> you feel like you're poisoned. 
When I was going through a real valley of brokenness, I'd come into the church on Sunday morning, and I'd look for a hug, and I'd go like this to some of the people that hugged me every week, and they would do everything in their power to get away from me. I'd be like, whoa. I'm like, you know why? God moves in the stillness and the quietness. He makes you alone. During the brokenness time, he gets you alone. Come on, you can't point fingers at anybody else. You can't blame anybody else. It's all just you and him. You yeah, you really don't know what's wrong. It's brokenness. He's breaking you and you're like, what's wrong? I'm crying all the time. Some people started in this ministry. And when they started the first few weeks, they're crying all the time. They're like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Ever since I got here, I just... <laughs> I praise God. And then when I told them it's a good thing, they're like, how can this be a good thing? But when it's over, you know it's good. Yeah. You know what brokenness is? Spiritual training as ambassadors of Christ. happens to somebody when they go into the military as a Green Beret? Sometimes the military will see a private comes into the military that just has different characteristics than a lot of the other people. And I call that potential. So they, 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 they manipulate the records to get him into a different kind of organization. Unknown to him. Some kind of special ops training. Next thing you know, he's in something that he's never thought he could be in. And what happens first is he's having to do things to sweat, bleed, and cry, and be alone. You know why they get to this place? It's because if they get into the heat of the battle, they not only learn to kill people when they're by themselves, they not only be able to protect people when they're by themselves, but I'm telling you, they get to a place that even if they are the last man standing, they will survive. God is training, and the only way He can get you to get to that kind of level is to break us. Come on. And let me tell you, the end results are a lot better than the military. Amen. Yeah. They train some people to kill, and then they come back here and they don't know how to live. In this time, we will need to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Here's what God said to me. I love when He said this. There are no second-hand faith. God doesn't give you a second-hand faith. You don't go to the Salvation Army and pick up some faith. Well, it hasn't been used much. I'll take some. We have to do this alone. Just as the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, we will always point, He will always point us to Jesus. And as we remain in the quiet, we will start feeling a draw, spending more time with Him. In the wee hours of the morning. Come on. Have you ever been a person that gets woke up in the wee hours of the morning and it happens continuously or, or consistently? Do you want to have better sleep? Get up. When God moves on you. Because if God moves on you to get up in the wee hours of the morning and you try to force yourself to sleep, you really never get rest. So you might as well get up and get it done. Because until you do, He's going to keep pulling and pulling and pulling. Well, a lot of us, we want God to move in our life, but whenever God starts to try to break us of our bad habits, you know what bad habits are? Comfortable habits. I believe the Word. Come on. Because the Word begins to break us. The Word will will fall right in without needing to force an entrance. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. 
Like you, Jesus. He does not force himself on anyone. It's only when we allow him to come that he really comes. All we have to do is make sure we are right in the sight of the Lord by doing what he commands us to do. We must love him with everything we are, calling out his name in good times and in bad. Most Christians only go after God in the bad times. I'm broke, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm alone. I'm going to God. Then as soon as Scott gets them back on track, thanks. Turmoil doesn't always have to be our last name. My name is not Bill Turmoil. <laughs> Jesus' name is above everything. If anything, my name should be Bill Jesus. Come on. In other words, I plead His name all over me. We have music, lyrics, artistry, dance. Not ballet, but other dance. And it's really love and expression to Him. You know, I think ballet probably would be a great thing for a lot of people. Not me, but other people. If they really did it as an expression to the Lord. There's a prophetic dance that has a lot of ballet mixed in with it. Yeah. In brokenness, you get so close to God because there's, you have nothing else that you learn when to speak and when not to speak. You know, a lot of people that are out of order in the church when they they do have a gift, they do have an anointing, but they kind of break up the order a lot. They're constantly breaking into the service. You know what those kind of people are? Not broken. They have not learned to hear and obey God. They haven't gone through the broken process. But here's a here's a here's a biggie. Every man or woman, boy or girl who becomes mighty gets broken first. Preach it. Learning to wait on the Lord helps us endure through hardships and troubles. I want to go one more. One more point. It's good stuff. Might as well preach. God gave me this little few words. Broken, but blessed. Broken does not mean you have to be down and out. Just will feel like that. Broken is like being fractured. Come on. We will see situations which we were looking for to having fall into place and suddenly they get discontinued. You know why? Because things will become dry. People will start falling away from us slowly but surely it will happen. Sometimes it will not even come through us asking. When the Lord chooses to interrupt us, it will come to pass. Brokenness is not an invitation. Sometimes it just starts happening. It's like a crossroad. You have to go. You have to go past it. A lot of us we try to take detours, but that road just goes everywhere. So you're going to end up crossing that road eventually. This mainly happens when God is calling us at, or training us for ministry. We must always be in a place where we are able to listen uh, to His voice while sensing His heart and desire in our lives. He is not a toy that we play with. Come on, God's not a toy that, he, that we play with. At, with 
any time, I'm telling you, we become bored or uninterested, he's not like a toy that you just put aside. The girls have like a million toys. They play with maybe 15 toys. Every now and then. One becomes great for a season, another one becomes great for a season. Many unbelievers in the past have tested God. Come on. You say, what do you mean? Some people don't know this, but the owner of the Titanic stood on the boat. A bow is a bow or bow? Okay, I'm not a boat person. You are. Thanks for being here. But he said this. He cursed God and shook his fist in heaven in doubt and anger, dictating to the Lord that he could not sink his ship. Come on. This isn't a true writing of history. Come on. This is not in the movie, I don't think. <laughs> they left that part out. Come on. Come on. You were not going to have the biggest ship and say, You can't sink my ship. You think it's not strange that that ship sank? Come on. You saying, did God do that to all those people? There's some things going on there I don't want to get into. Come on. But I'm telling you, you don't test God like that. For years, Christians have claimed they want to change their lifestyles, ways, and attitudes. But one thing they failed to realize that if we, ha- if they haven't changed after all this time, as he has been pricking their hearts to change, it shows that they're not willing to go through the fire of brokenness. Some of us are like elders in the church. And that doesn't mean age. Come on. And God's been doing this pricking and pulling. Some of these messages are coming forth right now. Sooner or later, are they going to listen? We must fall on the rock and become broken. You know what the rock is? Jesus. Causing us to become like ashes and dust. We have to learn to trust God with all our hearts. He knows how to change us and mold us. Fear is not of God when it's not fear of Him. We must not let the devil stop us from becoming broken. The devil will try to convince you, stop, you don't want to be broken anymore. The devil will try to tell you this is of him, that you're being broken. Come on. Where is his spirit in the valley of brokenness? He only mentioned that he is flesh and bone. The simple answer, the spirit is on the earth residing within us. And going around with us. Wherever we go, the spirit is moving. (coughs) The purpose of the Holy Spirit And the purpose of Jesus, first of all, Jesus came to die. Blameless, without sin, back to the Father. What Jesus went through was what you call suffering. I think, personally... Some Christians almost need to have some Roman soldiers come, pull them out of their house, shove some thorns on their head, strip their shirts off and begin to whip them. Come on. With the cat of nine tails, hang them on a cross and say, you wouldn't get crucified daily with Christ, so we have to crucify you separately. Come on. You say, why? Because we really are just mocking the price that Jesus paid for us when we don't take up our own crosses. 
And now I'm talking about ones that are supposed to be really, really in the church. Mm. Come on. Have you seen some of the masks people wear? They show up to church on Sunday. Come on, it's a, it's a, it's a big camaraderie. It's like a club. They might as well get emblems put on them like they're from some college dorms. Come on, really. We need to feel afraid of the Lord. There's not enough fear of the Lord in the church today. Really, there is not. If there was fear of the Lord, I wouldn't have what I'm preaching, preaching right now. Come on, what we're preaching right there in Belleville, that wouldn't be preached if there was a genuine fear of the Lord. There would be no need for it. You know how you get to a place of humility? Through trials of fire and heartache. Come on. How many want to be humble? But don't ask God to do it. Come on. He'll do it. He'll do it quick. And don't forget the word humiliation. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. He will be by our side. We just have to make sure to take Him at His word. He will perform it. Love has humility in it. Love is not profound. Love doesn't hold a record of wrongs and, and, uh, and rights. Love is not jealous. <coughs> Sometimes we think God's withholding. Giving the special gifts to certain people. There's some people that just have this jealousy mentality. Come on. Well, they're getting to do everything. They're getting to be on the team, the ushers. They're getting to do this. They're getting to do that. They're getting on the worship team. They're in the choir. My goodness, choirs. I was in a choir once. They had more backstabbing than I never knew what to do with. Yeah. Come on. You know why? Because if you were on the front row, you were somebody. The third, third row was kind of the dead people. They put me on the second row in my first week. You would have thought I'd... Whew. All kinds of dirty looks. And then they were trying, and back then I, anyway, I don't want to say it, <laughs> but all of a sudden <clears throat> they were having this special, they wanted just a, a short, like one minute solo, and they, they just went around the class and they were just saying, could you try to sing it, could you try to sing it, could you try to sing it. And all of a sudden, they went to me, and they said, could you try? And when I sung it, they said, you're it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, you thought I just, I was the enemy. I was the enemy. The very next day, there was a bag of marijuana put in my locker. Oh, man. Not by me. Hmm. Come on. Come on. My goodness. <laughs> it was only like a minute. They acted like I was becoming some kind of star or something. I wasn't even that interested. It was for a church choir, but that's... Come on. Come on. First of all, where did the... Okay. Where? Yeah, where did it come from? Yeah. <laughs> a church choir, you know, who got the marijuana in a big bag? It was a big bag. I mean, it was enough to get a... You know, go to a prison. It was a dealing amount. Come on, they they had tested my hair, my saliva, my blood, my urine, and I had to pass all them tests before they would even consider trying to change some change some things. <clears throat> and then they found the lock was broke inside. So it was a combination, and that's what got me free. Whew. All my tests came back good, too, by the way. Mm. Good thing it wasn't a couple years later. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. <laughs> we 
We must guard our spirits. And the enemy will have a field day with our minds and thoughts during this time of brokenness. Not every thought that comes into our minds is ours. Some people don't realize that. Not every thought that comes into your mind is yours. Come on. Sometimes you start to think and it stinks. The main ploy of the devil, the ploy of the devil is to cast a fiery darts, thoughts into our minds in order to break down our faith. You know what God's been really speaking to me? That there's too many counterfeit Christians. Come on. You know what a counterfeit is? It looks identical to the real thing. Come on. You can have some of the be- most beautiful art that we all know, and right next to it had the forgery, the counterfeit, and it will look exactly the same. It's just when you test the ink, when you test the details of the paper and the history and how old the paper is, that's whenever you really begin to find out what is right. Come on, because they've changed ink in the last few hundred years. Come on. And a lot of us today, the church looks just like a Christian. that come in sheep's clothing uh, surely come on have post- polyester for wool things for teeth and paws for feet you say what do you mean by that we are living in a day when we need to be aware and watchful for the counterfeits come on Some Christians come to try to do more damage in the church than to help it. You say, can they be led to the Lord? Can they be redeemed? Yes, eventually. These kind of Christians can be among a leader in a church who do not, and they are not the the informed of their secret And I'm telling you because it's a trickery that gets into a person. Some Christians have more trickery than salvation. You say, what do you mean? I believe spirits get so controlling of a person sometimes in the church that they live one completely opposite lifestyle at home and a whole other lifestyle at church. I had a friend whose cousin hated me, had me set up to get beat up a few times, and one day my friend told me he got saved. I was like, well, praise God. I mean, even though I wasn't saved, I was like, well, praise God, that should be good. Maybe I'll stop, you know, getting me jumped in alleys. So my friend says, can we go to the church? I was like, sure. I want to check it out. He was the leader that within a matter of a couple months, they put him as the leader of all the youth. Come on. He preached. He put things out of his mouth. Something, even though I wasn't saved at the time, bugged me about him still. He even came up to me and said, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done to you. Sounded great. And then all of a sudden, I lived in some rowdy places, just so you know. I walked in one of the rooms of this big house. There he was with another woman that wasn't his wife, with drugs all around him, his nose covered in powder. And it was not baby powder. Come on. 
The same weekend he was preaching from the pulpit. I thought maybe he had fallen. The very next week, my friend said, a cousin's preaching, you want to go? I said, no, I don't. Come on. This was right into a church. And you know, that's one of those things that the church just allows anybody to preach. Come on. I don't know about you, but we need to discern in the spirits. I don't want any, even the children to be talked to and preached to by some drug addict. Perverse individual. We must be aware of these types of spirits because they are in the church to kill. And you know why? Because first of all, brokenness hasn't been preached. And people don't recognize that that's one of the things that has to happen in a person's life. Because one thing a real, a real fake Christian won't be able to do is fake brokenness. That's right. They can fake the anointing. Yeah. They can fake the faithfulness. They can fake the agreement, but they will never fake brokenness. Sure. And let me tell you, a few tears is not broken. No. Are you talking about so-and-so? Yeah. Well, if you're thinking that, then maybe the Holy Spirit's talking about it. We will always go further in the invisible. We will always go further in the invisible when we do what we need to do in the natural. And that is, we have to die. We have to be broken. Come on. One of the first things the enemy wants to do is make you something that you're not. To make you puffed up into something that you're not. To get you to seem like you're this when you're not. And I'm telling you, he wins often. Come on, he does. He wins often. There's too many, there's even people in the pulpit of pastoral position who are having homosexual activity at home. Yeah. Come on, this is fact. Say, how do you know? Somebody tell you? No, the Holy Spirit told me. You want to know? Come on. And I'm telling you, a lot of us don't realize it's always a shock to a church when the pastor's exposed to something. Come on. You know why? Because we don't look for the signs. So understand, God's pulling weeds right now. Everybody excited about that? He's pulling weeds right now. You know what happens when you get done pulling weeds? It's good. Stop strangling things. But the garden also looks empty. But you know what? When the garden looks empty at first, because those weeds are gone, the things that are in that garden is going to blossom. Come on. Do you receive it today? Jesus. Woo, good stuff.